Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. We have a Teddy Wright update video, What Teddy Refused to Do in Paradise. And our good friend Dr. Diane Strakowski said, Just when we thought it couldn't get any worse. Wow. So we're going to get into this story. Follow me on Instagram at dneals. Private behind-the-scenes bonus content at patreon.com slash Dave Neal. I'll give you a quick teaser right here. Here's last night's dance lesson. This was lesson five of seven. So we're getting towards the finish line of my wedding uh, waltz lessons here. Uh, not too bad. Uh, our good dance instructor, Jared, yelling at me to keep my shoulders down, back up, booty out, the whole thing. Tasha's giving me lessons. We're doing the box step here, waltzing. So I'm going to have my full analysis of this. Oh, looking pretty good right there. Not too bad. So we'll have the full analysis of these dance lessons over on Patreon. If you want to check that out, we're getting married next Saturday, leaving Tuesday morning. But hey, not too bad if you ask me. All right. You know, I was in band. Okay. So we're going to get into it right now. Let's uh, adjust the monitors here. And we're going to talk about uh, Teddy and what could have happened. Morgan Pop Talks had a convo with uh, Zachary Reality. And the conspiracy sort of makes sense. By the way, shout out to Catherine for joining the Patreon. She said she made it woohoo bring on all the wedding content there it is if you want to see jess from chatty broads her reaction when the wedding dress finally arrived during the middle of our interview uh very well all right yesterday we posted this we made this story explaining the teddy mystery but some new information has come out teddy posted this on instagram yesterday something i'm proud of learning leaving environments that are cruel to me and the people around me sticking to my boundaries no matter how many times people in authority Try to cross them. All right, what are the boundaries that Teddy set? We'll get into that right now. Here's what Morgan Pop Talks and Zachary Reality had to say on TikTok and Instagram. Did you know that Teddy was just going to up and leave? Yeah, so what I was told months ago is that Teddy basically left because the producers told her she was only allowed to be into Andrew. They really wanted her and Andrew and Brandon and Serene as the top two couples. And the second that she showed any type of interest in someone else, they were mm. like, nope, you're not allowed to go on a date with Rodney. You have to be with Andrew. Um, and they just apparently treated her pretty horribly. So that's kind of why she leave. She left without saying oh, goodbye. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, that was my question. Like, oh, like, why is Teddy giving up so early? So and on a side note, credit where it's due to Morgan's, her eyebrow game on point on a good Friday. Morgan, it just uh, the Lord's work being done right there, you know. Easily, why is she not saying bye to any of her friends? But you're saying it has nothing to do with what was actually happening on the beach, but it was more that producers were manipulating her into only wanting to be with Andrew. Did you know that? All right, so that's an interesting theory I don't think we covered. Uh, Zachary Reality says that the reason Teddy stormed off, didn't say goodbye to anybody, just bounced out of there, was because A, she wasn't into Andrew anymore, and B, she wanted to pursue other relationships, and the producer said, no, you're going to stick it out with this guy, which is very sister wives, culty. I mean, we always compare the show's producers to um, you know the idea that the corporation bachelor is psychopathic, as all corporations are. They don't feel emotions. They're just corporations. And the show wanted Teddy to be a love story with Andrew, and she just wasn't feeling it. Now, that could for sure be the case. That makes perfect sense. I don't know who his sources are, but um, everyone in the comment section says, now her exit makes more sense. I'd be upset if I were her too. The producers are ruining the show. Let relationships flow organically. Not to mention when couples switch up, it makes the show more entertaining. Yeah, I mean, there. the initial thought was she didn't want to date Rodney because that would have made some love triangle. Either way, you know, letting the show play out, you would think would be the most honest um, way to uh, farm drama. Now, you might also say, well, the show's got 30 people in the bullpen, in the in the hotel, ready to come onto the beach. So the show, from the show, the producer's perspective, just to take the side of the producers here, it could be, and it's always good when we say it could be to have some X-Files music here, it could be... There's no conspiracy. But it could be that the show just wanted uh, to get new people on the beach. So they were like, all right, look, no, you can't date Rodney. We brought you here to date Andrew. If you don't want to date Andrew, go F off. 
Maybe that's what happened. And the show wanted to bring fresh people onto the beach uh, if that wasn't the love story because maybe they, maybe the show, and again, these are all just questions I'm asking. I have no idea. But maybe the producers had already interviewed Rodney and knew who he was into and they didn't want Teddy to get in the middle of that fray. Of course, overproducing could lead to a pop you know, possibly ruining what would have been a good love story. Speaking of ruining what could be a good love story, yesterday's video, Sally's Wild Story Explained, uh, recapped reality Steve explaining how the show manipulated Sally. Now, um, Game of Roses, also a great um, a platform, podcast, Instagram, social media, uh, with uh, our friends Chad and Lizzie here. They do a fantastic job breaking down how the show manipulates this and that. So here's their reaction, my reaction of their reaction, of Clickbait's reaction to what went down with Sally's suitcase. I know people, like, I was like, why would you open up their suitcase? Not cool. And it's like, well, pro you know, producers told us, like, and yeah, is that shitty? Yeah, that's shitty. But the truth is, like... Is it bad? Yeah. Should they have not done it? Of course. Now, the now Game of Roses commented this in their Instagram right here. This is just embarrassing, in my opinion, dangerous. No one went through Sally's suitcase. They went through a fake suitcase the producers set up for them. Don't act like you feel bad for Sally when everything that happened was a choice production purposefully made to embarrass her on national television. Unfortunately, there are people who truly believe this insane narrative that Joe, Tia, and Natasha are continuing to give credence to. These are the same people who go send hate uh, and death threats to Genevieve, Sally, Kira, Jill, etc. Clayton Eckerd was just on Off the Vine this week saying he was extremely suicidal after his season because of all the hate he received. Shaking my head, I hope these silly little videos will shed some light on what actually happened behind the scenes. Thank you. You know, you don't have to do everything the producers tell you. Like, there's producers that are that are good producers. There's producers that are going to want you to do shitty things and silly things to make TV. You just don't have to do it. Hold on. I'm going to need to sit down for this one. Yeah, you can choose not to do what a producer tells you to do. Um, but that will result in you just getting kicked off the show Teddy. because if you're not going to do what they tell you to do you are not of use anymore and so you're discarded or they say well we're never gonna have you on another show again basically threatening you so i mean yeah you definitely can say excommunication taking you out of the group kicking out no or maybe the producer that encouraged the girls to go through that fake suitcase expulsion was telling them that, oh, it'll be like a funny little bit. The whole audience will get it. Of course, they're going to trust what the producer is saying. They're in a position of authority. Why would they not trust them? Yeah, All right, so there's the Game of Roses response. Makes perfect sense. I'm going to be interviewing Game of Roses. And they'll, that'll be part of the uh, wedding week videos next week. Here's a fun one. You watch The Bachelor? I don't like to have you. Yeah. Okay, so when I was on The Bachelor at the second. So we've got, first of all, we've got Nick. I've already shared this clip. We have Nick Vile in what appears to be a straight jacket, although it's just him in an oversized white shirt. And then our friend over here uh, game on Game of Roses, uh, just, just not enjoying the conversation. Good time, and Caitlin broke up with me. Different situation altogether. Here we go. But obviously I was emotionally invested when I took this big risk to like take another leave of absence from my job and like chase this girl that I had this like, you know, three or four week love affair via FaceTime with. And well, very different in those four weeks or so, we shared a ton and we were really connected and bonded. And then I took this big risk to go on this show. And I was just like, hey, I'm like, I'm here for you. So like, don't fuck with me, please. You know, like send me home if like, if you like someone else. And then a lot of shit happened while filming, all that led up to me being like pretty confident the day of, right? And then she chose another guy, right? And now, Gentle granted, reminder, like, this went down really in 2015. Things played out. So of course, and again, we're jumping around a little bit, but Game of Roses, they are speaking truth to power. Hour. They're calling out so many funny things. Of course, we know. And look, we 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 respect and appreciate Nick's commentary here. Um, he's responding to a, a voice uh, to a caller's question, which I guess I guess that's uh, you know for the people that don't understand what's going on here, they go, "Well, he was sure he was bringing up Caitlin Bristow, but he was using it to respond to a question." Whereas people are calling him out because. Uh, him and his girlfriend called out Katie Thurston, who was talking about her season last year and some of the guys from her season they go why aren't you just move on and then of course 
now he's being called out because you commodify your experience. I feel like anyone can talk about their experience and make money off of it and do any of that. But when you call out other people for doing the same, you better have moved on. Now, Jordan Kimball said, I thought he rebranded. Um, <laughs> and this is too early for this tomfoolery. This is goat on goat war, y'all. Um, so anyway, very, uh, very interesting seeing the side uh, feuds happening um, as they go on. Let's see. Let's see what we have here. Just going down Game of Roses randomly here. Oh, maybe are we not going to load now? All right. So anyway, that's that's what we have for this video. How does it all tie together? Is the question. Well, we've got Teddy not playing by the rules, calling out the show. Sally basically in Teddy's comment section saying, "You go, girl." And are we beginning to see a loosening of contestants? not um, just going with whatever edit they get. Now, as we know, the show has them under a contract so that they can't discuss things that were edited in the way that they were. They, they have to kind of just like a play into the fact that what you saw is what you saw and not discuss what actually happened. Now, if a lot of the contestants all at the same time decide to talk about it, would the show start suing all of them? Uh, or would they just admit that it's all sort of fabricated? This is what we'll have to find out as we watch the season continue. And um, very interested to see uh, uh, the uh, the evolution of the show. Uh, so shout out to Zachary Reality, Morgan Pop Talks, and Game of Roses for all of your fascinating uh, looks at um, sort of deciphering what the show is providing us. We'll be back with more content after this. Patreon.com slash Dave Neal for a 10 a.m. live stream this morning if you want behind-the-scenes content. Bye, everybody.